guys my name is Courtney J and welcome back to my YouTube channel this is a get to know me Q&A and I am so excited to finally film this video for you guys I haven't done a Q&A video since 2019 I deleted that video so don't even try to look for it it's gone but um yeah since 2019 I've been trying to do another Q&A but every time I would ask my followers on instagram to you know give me questions they act like they didn't have any so i didn't feel satisfied so i was not gonna shoot this video until i was satisfied with questions and we got some so i'm excited i'm really really excited if you guys hear anything in the background it's the babies it's um baby sash and pet. make sure that they stay quiet so they don't interrupt me I literally am re-filming this video because they were making too much freaking noise and it was irritating me. So we're gonna try this again. <laughs> Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe to stay tuned for more videos from your girl. If you haven't watched my previous vlog, make sure you guys watch it. I generally think that um, you guys love the stripper vlogs a lot, which I understand, but this channel didn't start with that. I blew up with the stripper vlogs, however, I'm more than just a stripper, so I would appreciate if you guys would watch my regular videos also. Thank you. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the video. Question number one. How were you able to unlearn certain religious practices from childhood and become confident in the skin that you're in now? So basically, when I started my spiritual journey in 2019, I watched two documentaries called Hebrews to Negroes and that really opened my eyes to a lot and i was one of those children that questioned everything i never understood why we would go to church and i would still come home to a toxic abusive household it never made sense to me so i always questioned my religion to begin with so after i watched those documentaries and it basically explained like who we are where we came from and things like that and it broke down christianity it just made sense so then I was like, okay, that makes sense to me. This resonates and aligns with how I feel. I don't think that there's a man in the sky. I don't think that Jesus is Jesus, you know, not to get too deep into it, but for me and myself and my own opinion, my own opinion, things just made sense to me for me to let Christianity go. And it wasn't hard for me to unlearn certain practices because I didn't grow up in a strict religious household. Far from it, you know, like I wasn't raised around, oh, wait till marriage and blah, blah, blah. Like my mom didn't instill Christianity into me. We just went to church and whenever stuff happened, she would say pray about it. <laughs> and how have I became confident in the skin that I'm in now? Through healing and mental breakdowns and positive affirmations <laughs> and just telling myself that everything that i thought was wrong with me was because someone told me there was something wrong with me so i started to tell myself there's nothing wrong with me and i still do it every day because i still get certain thoughts here and there um question number two do you like girls I am sexually attracted to girls, but I am not romantically attracted to them. Um, question number three, what is the craziest thing a man did in the club that I work at? So the club that I work at currently, crazy stuff happens literally like almost every time I work. But because I do stay to myself a lot of the times, and I really do my best to not have anything happen to me, but you know, some things are out of our control like other people's behavior. Other people's behavior is 100% out, outside of our control. So there's two stories I can think of from the top of my head. One time there was this guy from Peru and he was in the VIP, right? And there was a whole group of him, like him and his friends, they were from Peru. He didn't dance with me, he danced for another girl. He pulled his wee wee out basically and the bouncer came up to check him. 
his friends didn't like it so they all literally ganged up on the bouncer it was like 10 dudes versus one in a small vip area it was insane and another incident that happened that i could think of from the top of my head this guy got vips from me and he already paid over 300 so he had like 80 dollars left to pay but it wasn't for me it was for the club you know because you know at strip clubs you have to give a certain percentage to the club i already got my buck you know what i'm saying so at this point you're not finessing me you're finessing the club <laughs> so he didn't want to pay it so he got banned over 80 dollars but that's not the crazy part. The crazy part is there was a customer at the bar that thought that the bouncer was the customer that wouldn't pay me. So the customer punched the bouncer or put the bouncer in a headlock or something. And it was like a whole like fight in the middle of the club. It was insane. Number four, how to find the motivation to get back into dancing at the club. The main thing is to remember what you're dancing for. But most importantly, put your peace first. Do whatever is necessary to take a break, however long that may be. And when you're ready, just understand what you're dancing for. Think about what made you stop dancing for a minute and see what different things you can incorporate in your routine so you can feel better energetically to go to work, whether that's finding a new club or learning how to seclude yourself more and protect your energy and things like that to just not let temporary situations because all of what we're doing now is temporary don't let it affect your mentality that things are just you know that things suck or you're not good enough those are just lies number five what sparked and inspired my business the true aura so in 2020 during the pandemic if you know the story you know that i got put out in february of 2020 so in the midst of 2020 i was staying with different guys and then i finally moved in with my mom again and one guy in particular that i stayed with he put me on to my business because he was selling products that i was interested i just never thought about selling them and he basically just put me on game and my soul resonated with it so i was like okay i'm ready to do this i'm one of those people where you know i'm not afraid to do anything that i have an interest in now because you really don't know how something is unless you try it when i was younger i was a bit hesitant but as i got older and started on my spiritual journey i didn't care anymore so i was more than happy to embark on this journey i had a hundred percent faith that this was going to be successful i wasn't working at hooters anymore because of the quarantine that was put on everybody but I was still getting money from um, the stimulus or whatever. So I just used that money to invest into the true ore because I just needed to start something for myself. I had nothing else. <laughs> and I had resources around me from my friends that were graphic designers that knew how to draw. So I, I easily had access to someone that I could pay that was my friend to do my logo for me and things like that. I got eight shea butters put my labels on them. I had a friend in Atlanta that put me on to where to get my labels. And within 24 hours, less than that actually, I sold out of the eight containers. And that's when I was inspired to keep going because I had so much fun just being in control and just creating my logo. I'll put the logo right here. So the logo is inspired from me being a Gemini. That's why you see the two girls that are supposed to be me. And if you look closely, you'll see the dimples. So it's two twins because I'm a Gemini. The true aura was inspired by people complimenting me on my aura, which they still do. So I just named my products the true aura because I sell products that I personally use and it caters to your skin, your hair, and your spirit. And I asked this, commented, I'm in school for skincare and herbs and enjoy hearing others love for it. Well, there you go, girl. Um, I don't really promote the True Aura as much as I did two years ago, only because since I've been dancing for a year, I really just care to um, perfect my craft with dancing and really just further myself into the entertainment industry. Question number six, best night ever. The best night ever that I've had at the club, one of the best nights would have to be when this guy literally spent 
over two thousand dollars and a hundred dollar bills on me in a vip all because i asked him if he wanted more dances and he was so drunk he was like do i want more dances so his ego was like i gotta prove this girl wrong like yeah i got money yeah i want more dances so he had a whole bunch of a hundred dollar bills in his fanny pack and he just threw it and i was like I like this. And then another night, this couple had came in and they liked Slim Girl specifically. So that was my first time experiencing somebody just spending a whole stack of ones on me at one time in the middle of the floor. Like the whole floor was covered in ones. And then the worst night ever. I've had two worst nights ever. One of the worst nights ever was my last night ever dancing at the Urban Club here. It was just so much low vibrational stuff that occurred and that was my sign to put my piece first because not all money is good money and it's not even worth it. It's not even worth it and that's what having an abundance mindset. And then the second worst night I had was right here, Christmas. That was so traumatic. Like, you guys could just watch that video. Baby Sag. Question number seven, what made you get into dancing? So basically what had happened was um, I left my mom's house. I started my pole journey in November of 2020 and I wanted to further it and get paid to seduce, get paid to look pretty. And I really wanted to get myself stable. So the military wasn't gonna work. I wanted to have my own schedule. I wanted to have some form of leisure and I had people around me that danced before, specifically my sister also. So I wasn't oblivious to the industry, but once I got in it, I was able to understand the technicality. No parent or anyone to help me financially to get a place specifically, so I had to do it for myself. And dancing helped me get my own apartment within two, three months of me stripping. On top of me like spending irresponsibly once I started touching my first couple thousand dollars and whatnot and I was still able to get what I needed done. The biggest inspiration for why I started dancing is T-Pain because I loved how he talked about dancers before I knew he was talking about dancers but once I became aware that he was talking about dancers and the way that in the music videos I'm sprung specifically towards the end and she was dancing for him in the blue light and I was like like I was just like oh my god I want to do that like I was like, I want to be a private dancer for someone <laughs> important <laughs> and get paid out better way to try to do this than just strip right <laughs> question number eight how did you overcome nervousness if any so the crazy thing about it, I wasn't nervous to start stripping. My nervousness started when I already started stripping because I had to learn how to talk to people. Like, it's different to tell someone, yeah, you gotta talk to people. And then we actually have to talk to people. You get what I mean? So my nervousness that I got over was me just talking to people and me not caring if I was gonna get rejected or not. I was nervous if I was gonna get rejected. I was nervous if I wasn't, you know, thick enough for people. Like I was nervous to put myself in the mix. And this one guy in particular at the club I don't work at anymore, he came in one night and he told me, he was like, you know, sometimes you just have to get into the mix to get your money. And ever since he told me that, that help boost my confidence so much to not be nervous and not be scared and just go out there and just shake my butt and just see what happened. <laughs> Number nine, what is the biggest lesson takeaway that I've learned as a dancer? I've learned so many. Oh my gosh. Say what you want about stripping, <clears throat> but stripping helped me realize my worth and my value as a woman so much that I was not aware of growing up. Stripping has taught me how to be assertive and how to dive into my femininity and how to understand that a lot of people just project things and I am in control of my own self. 
So whatever whatever people want to say about other people, whatever customers want to say about other dancers because of their own insecurities or whatever dancers want to say about other dancers because of their own insecurities or whatever the case may be, it's like I've just learned that people are going to be themselves and I cannot attach myself to other people's problems because I don't want them to be attached to mine <laughs> that I'm working on. And overall, stripping just taught me that I'm very much powerful. And also, it taught me how to budget. These slow seasons humbled me. I don't even like to use the term humble because it means to lower your input. That's exactly what these slow seasons did. It very much humbled me. It made me feel low about myself. But on the other end of the spectrum, it really taught me how to just save better. And stripping also taught me what type of men I want to be around. What type of man do I want to marry? What type of clientele do I want? And overall, where do I intend to go with this? And just remembering that. Stripping has helped me to realize that you have to live your life and remember what your purpose is. And if you don't know what it is, it's okay. Through time, you realize it. And when you do realize it, you gotta stick to it so you don't get yourself lost in the midst of everything else that comes with this job. What's the biggest challenge you've had as a business owner? Consistency. It is so easy for people to, you know, be like, well, this is just my business and blah, 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 and get an LLC and stuff. Um, I was fortunate enough to attract an accountant into my life through someone here in Charlotte um, that I used to stay with. So she helped me a lot with just me understanding taxes better, how to utilize my LLC and things like that. But most importantly, it's just understanding, okay, once you get this LLC, what are you gonna do with it? What are the benefits that you have as a business owner? And how much do you love what you do? Like if you do this without getting paid for it, that's how you know that it's your purpose. Yeah, and just being consistent, not beating yourself up over it and understanding that you have to be your own main supporter when other people don't support you. Question number 11. Do you follow a budget and set weekly financial goals? Yes, I manifest a certain amount of dollars every week. Do I make those goals every week? No. However, I still affirm to myself that I do. So at the end of the day, this is temporary. What I'm manifesting for myself is happening. So I'm not gonna stop telling myself that I am making blah, blah, blah. Like if I make $50 one night, I'ma still tell myself I made $5,000. Cause guess what? It's going to happen anyway. <laughs> I already set the intention. So just because one unfortunate night or several unfortunate nights, that's not gonna stop me from the fortunate nights that I am manifesting for myself and the fortunate nights I've already had. And um, I do the 50, 30, 20 percent budget method. I would suggest you guys Googling YouTube it for more clarity. Question number 12, how do you keep your confidence high in the industry? Affirmations. What you tell yourself is very important because your thoughts tie into your feelings, your feelings tie into your words, and your words tie into your actions. Or is it actions and words? Either way, they all tie into each other. So really what you tell yourself is very important. You just have to tell yourself positive affirmations. And another thing that I do, I cry a lot. <laughs> Whenever I'm overwhelmed, I have to cry because that's a form of me releasing energy. And I generally feel better because I'm just like, why are you in your head? There's nothing wrong with you. Okay, you didn't make money for like three hours. And sometimes when I think that I don't make money, I come home and I come my money and I made way more than I expected. And it just goes to show like, just be okay. Be confident in yourself that nothing's wrong. You know, I started to tell myself recently, like, I have the opportunity to coexist and work with other beautiful women. I'm not the type of person to put other women down to bring myself up. I don't think that's a healthy way to boost your confidence. <laughs> I think if you just tell yourself that you can coexist with other beautiful women and everybody can rape these dudes' pockets, 
then it'll just be healthier for you to understand like I'm beautiful and they're beautiful. We're all beautiful. Like, you know, so it's really just about the thoughts and what you tell yourself because how you feel about yourself reflects onto other people. So if you put somebody down, you have to ask yourself, why are you talking about somebody else? What are you insecure about? And also just understanding that my size is amazing. I'm amazing. I'm smexy. And there's nothing wrong with me. Question number 13. What do you do to rid yourself of negative energy you've encountered in the club? Yeah, I cry, meditate, smoke, vent. <laughs> I do all of those things. Journal. I do all of those things. And then just through time, whatever thoughts I had will start to fade away on their own. Question 14. How well do you and your sister handle disagreements? How we used to handle them was so toxic. Uh, but how we handle them now, we really don't have disagreements like that. Typically, if I have a disagreement with people, I just say, okay, we can under we can agree to disagree and it's okay. No love is lost. There's no hatred. That's how I like to end disagreements because literally, like what what really can you do about having different viewpoints? <laughs> Question 15, how do you plan to achieve your short-term goals? by sticking to my healing journey and by sticking to positive affirmations and by continuing to just live my life and be happy and give value to the world because how i see life now everything that we do in the present moment which is all we have is right here right now everything that we do in the now will affect whatever tomorrow is or 10 years from now whatever time is an illusion in my opinion but essentially though, whatever you do now, how you think now will affect everything else. So just focus on what you can do in the present moment, if that makes sense. So as far as my short term goals, I just do what I can on a daily. Question number 16, how do you feel about the new year 22 and new world restrictions and how does it affect you as a dancer? It doesn't because I don't allow it to. <laughs> Literally, everything is a choice. And if you follow me on Instagram, then you'll see the type of posts that I put on my story. So you already know where my head is at in this matrix. So I don't allow these restrictions to be in my world. There's no restrictions. There's no limitations. There's no lack. When you think like that, your reality will showcase that. I don't think it's healthy to think that there's restrictions in your life no matter what you know i don't want to be insensitive to the whole pandemic so i'm not going to say much but i just don't think so much about the restrictions because i don't have a restricted life i don't tell myself that and there's more than enough clubs and places in the world that I can dance at besides places that say you need to have a vaccine. And how do I feel about New Year 2022? Me personally, I believe that the New Year's doesn't start until the springtime, but because a lot of people go off of the new calendar, I, I believe that 2022 is really whatever you make it. Everything is literally how you make it. Like I said, everything you do in the now, which is all that we have, is all that matters. So if you choose to be in your healed version, then do what you can every day to give yourself the life that you deserve. If you choose to dwell on things that don't serve you, then you chose to do that. So your year is going to be that. Other than that, I generally think that my year has been phenomenal so far. I've grown so much already every day i'm not the same person i change every day for the better <laughs> so yeah i feel pretty good i turned 21 this year so i'm really excited i finally get to check into hotels by myself and i'll be able to dance in vegas and stuff so all the other goals that i have for myself once i turn 21 it's up and it's stuck I'm very excited. Question 17. How well do you and your sister get along? We get along really, really well now. Now that we're both on our healing journeys, we connect better as sisters. 
and I love that for us. Um, question 18, where do you get your dancer outfits from? I get my outfits from Malaya's Exotic Wear on Instagram. Make sure you guys check her out. I absolutely love her. Um, I figured out what dance outfits work best for me and my body type, which is really important. And actually, a lady at the Urban Club I used to work at put me on tip about this. And she basically shared that you really just have to pay attention to what makes you the most money, what makes you feel the most sexy, and what favors your body type. So for me, it's bikinis, it's um, slingshots, um, I have a few one-piece fishnet outfits, things like that, thigh high, like those type of shoes, you know what I'm saying? Um, I order my shoes from Pleasers. And sometimes you can go to any sex store, like Red Door or whatever, and find like really nice outfits. In Charlotte, there's a Hustlers and an Impulse dance store. So I could go to those stores if I wanted to to get outfits. But I mainly get my stuff from Malaya's. Do you prefer gentlemen or booty clubs? I prefer gentlemen. The, this one year of me dancing, I have come to terms with the fact that urban clubs that are not full of clientele of people that actually like to spend money, no matter your body type, they're not for me. They're not for me. Like, I am not about to do the most for so little. And I think that a lot of basic urban clubs are like that. So I'm going to explain this in my way. And I'm gonna keep it so like, I'm gonna try to keep it unbiased, just from observation. Don't attack me. The difference between gentlemen clubs and booty clubs. Basically with gentlemen clubs, is more laid back. And I think that you're more in your feminine in gentlemen's clubs because you don't have to do the most unless you're a stage person and you really just love to go all out on stage. However, you can really just use your mouthpiece to get money. Like the club I work at now is mainly a VIP club. So it has helped me to sell rooms more and more. So when I go to bigger establishments, it won't be as hard for me to sell a champagne room because I'm so used to having to sell VIP rooms. And um, I think with gentlemen clubs, we do less and get more for petite women, natural bodies, whatever. And then you have the booty clubs, which there's different. You have the booty clubs that are mainstream booty clubs, like I would say King of Diamonds, Onyx, like chain ones that are, that are in multiple uh, states where anyone could work there. Anyone could work there and you make your buck off your hustle. And then you have some of like the smaller, regular, just in the state type of clubs or whatever. Um, and I think in those establishments, you're doing a lot for less. Even in the club in Atlanta that I work at, it's like, it's $5 throughout the whole entire day. And I find it interesting how at urban clubs, they have short prices, but at gentlemen clubs, they have higher prices. And I noticed that from me travel dancing to Florida and stuff like that. It's a it's a difference. It's a real difference. And I noticed that you have to go to clubs that cater to your body type more. If you're a petite person and you can make your money easier by just talking to someone, do you prefer that or do you prefer working somewhere where you have to do a little bit more for the same amount that you could get somewhere else, if that makes sense. We all have a club that works for our body type, that works for our essence. So when you figure out your essence and what works for you, go to the club that works for your essence. Don't try to force it. Don't try to go to a club that strictly caters to BBL bodies. If you are slim petite, then you're gonna mentally think that, oh, I gotta compete with the BBL girls and then you're gonna start feeling insecure. Go to a club that works best for you. And if you're a thicker girl and a gentleman's club doesn't hire you because sometimes they do that, they don't hire thicker women, go to clubs that cater to your size. That's basically all I'm saying, <laughs> just from my observation. Go where it fits you. And for me, it's gentlemen clubs. 
I like booty clubs though, but the only booty clubs I'll go to is the one that I went to in Philly and in Miami. I'll go to those because <laughs> it's like fun and they don't care. They're not so picky. It's all about your hustle, honestly. Question number 20, do you make most of your money from white men or black men? And this is an interesting question because I literally have to sit and think about it. The Urban Club was mainly black guys. So all of my money came from black guys. There was only a few times when white people would come in or an East Asian, but mostly it was black guys. <laughs> so I got all my money from black guys. But when I go to a gentleman's club, it's a mixed environment. And I think there's a balance, honestly. I do, however, think... Actually, no. I was going to say that I think that I have more leisure with white guys. But I won't even say that. I really think it's a balance. Because you have some white customers that will not get a dance, not tip, or will tip slow. And then you have some black guys that will tip you in 20s and, you know, spend 300 on you in VIP at the minimum. And then you have some black guys that are cheap, tip slow, and some white guys that will tip more, pay you for conversation, and blah, blah, blah. So for me, I honestly, genuinely think there's a balance between both races. It all just depends on the quality of guys that come into the club whenever I work. In 21, am I a stage or VIP girl? I am both. But what I like to do, I like to utilize the stage to get my VIPs. So if it's like a lot of people in the club, I like to utilize the stage when I'm on stage. And then when I get off and after I do, you know, my eye contact with everybody while I'm on stage, I can go to whoever tipped me the most or go to whoever looks the most timid to come up to me. Cause usually the ones that are most timid will go to VIP with you. But I'm a VIP girl too, because I'll be running it up in there. <laughs> One guy literally stayed until 4 a.m with me in VIP and the club had closed like an hour prior, but they stayed open because I was in there. <laughs> Question 22, how do you deal with colorist men in the club? I don't deal with them. I choose to not attach myself to them. I choose to not even take it personal. If they say something that's colorist, I'm just like, okay. You know, I've been told by one guy in particular, he said, you know, I don't really date. He said date or like girls of your skin tone, but you're beautiful. I'll wife you up. And I told him, I was like, you shouldn't say things like that because that's not a compliment. He was like, you know what? You're right. That's why I don't talk to people. And I'm like, no, don't blame that. Just work on talking to people. Figure something out within yourself because don't try to blame what you just said for, don't make excuses. It's a deeper issue. Um, does it happen? Do I get told frequently that I look really pretty for my skin tone? Yeah, I really just don't take it personal because really what can you do about somebody else's perspective? We're not in here to try to prove people right or wrong. We're in here to get their money and go. 20, question 23, would you ever travel dance to New York, New Jersey, Vegas, Texas, or Arizona? New York, whenever they take away that vaccine mandate, yes. New Jersey, yes. Vegas, most definitely. Texas, I don't know. Arizona, possibly. But I hear that they're very colorist there. Question 24, based on location and club, what's a good night at the club and price range? I'll just speak over my overall my first year of dancing. The best season I've had during my first year of dancing was the springtime. The summer was okay. Fall to winter was not like the spring. I'm not gonna say that it sucked because I don't wanna manifest that. Um, it just wasn't like, I made way, I attracted way more money in the springtime than I did during like fall, winter bills still got paid i still made my bag like it wasn't that i didn't make anything or i didn't make enough i still made things how else would i pay for anything <laughs> it just wasn't you know as extra like the springtime was i'll put it like that in a price range like 500 to a thousand yeah 
five pennies to a thousand. I can't say a specific day because there are some days that are considered the slow nights where I made a bag. Like I made bags on Sundays and sometimes the Sundays will be busy. Sometimes they won't be. Sometimes a Wednesday will be better than a Friday. Sometimes a Friday will be so trash and a Saturday will be so trash and a Sunday will be so trash, but a Monday will be magnificent and the Wednesday will be magnificent. So it's really just tick for tat at the club that I'm personally at. But overall, I think that Charlotte, the clubs I have worked at in Charlotte, they're just, they're hit or miss days in Charlotte. That's how I feel, honestly. But for me, I do have my set goals of like a minimum 500. But if you watch my vlogs during like recently the past two months or whatever, the lowest that I'll like make when it's not busy at all would be like 300 or like 200 if there's like really nobody in there. Sometimes 50, but it happens. <laughs> It's okay. So I really don't know what a good night will be because again, it's like hit or miss. One Saturday could be good and then you go next week and it'll be terrible. Question 25, where do I get my heels from? Pleasers. But keep in mind that the bottom of the shoe will come off. Like my cute freaking red thigh highs, the bottom part of the freaking heel came off. Well, not the hill, but the platform, it came off and I'm really like sad about it. And then my other shoes, they all like tore up in like the front. And I assume it's because of the pole work that I do on the stage stuff, or maybe the stage just effed up my shoes or something. Uh, it's insane. Question 26, have you been saving for your car? Yes, I have. A lot of people have been very curious about this. I refuse to get a car note. I have a huge milestone, which is me paying for my car in cash, and it's going to happen. And I'm very particular on the type of car that I get because it is just me right now. I don't have a boyfriend, I don't have a husband, I don't have parents to help me if there's an issue with my car. So I'm very peculiar on what type of car that I'm going to get for myself because I have to take care of everything for that car if something is wrong. So I'm not in a rush to get things. Like I know people are like, I know a lot of people think they have to have certain things at a certain age, but I'm telling myself otherwise, I get what I need when it's time because I'm aligned. And the universe gives me signs that show me that I'm aligned. So I don't give a crap about anybody else in their timeline. Cause at the end of the day, I'm the only one paying all of my bills right now. So I'm doing what makes sense for me. So no worries guys, I'm doing what makes sense for me, what works for me because I desire a certain type of vehicle for myself. And yeah, it's just, I'm gonna put evil eye emojis on the screen so nobody that doesn't like me tries to send me bad vibes. Keep it, <laughs> return back to sender. <laughs> Question 27, how do you deal with people finding out that you dance? if a guy likes you and he finds out. Okay, so basically, I don't care if people find out that I dance. I just tread lightly on people finding out where and most of the times when I dance because of recent, not recent events, but because of events that happened a couple months ago, I've had to learn the hard way about really protecting myself in all forms. So I don't care to share where I work at and when I work because some people really don't like people or me or whatever the case may be. And I really just have to protect myself at all times. And people just don't have genuine intentions for you. Some people will smile in your face and talk crap about you and you won't even know it. So it's very important to really protect yourself, do protection spells, like all that. So I don't care if people find out I dance. I just don't want people that I don't know personally to know where I'm at because I just don't have time for that. Um, now if a guy that I like, I want him to because me personally, 
how I choose to go about my life. Whenever someone, you know, wants to be with me, wants to marry me or whatever, I will not strip anymore. I generally don't think that I should strip and be married. I don't wanna do that. I'd rather work under a family business or his business while I continue to grow my own instead of me working for someone else's. And yeah, like stripping is temporary, but dancing is gonna forever be in my life. So if I can give up stripping and get all the money that I still need and focus a lot of my attention on more dance classes and more casting calls and stuff like that, that's perfect. I want my lover to know that I dance. It's a part of me. It's just not gonna be forever. Question 28, are you seeing anyone seriously at the moment? No, but that's changing because I'm putting myself back on the market because I'm tired of being a strong, independent black woman. I did not ask for that title. I don't want it. So I'm not going to have it. I'm not gonna die alone and I'm not going to live a life by myself, paying for everything by myself doing things by myself no life is about union <laughs> and unpopular opinion i love kevin samuels a lot of people don't i don't care i do i understand what he's saying because it aligns with me a lot of people don't and that's fine i've invested hours watching multiple of his youtube videos that are like damn near two hours long so i fully comprehend and understand his content and before anybody comments anything about it watch his videos to their entirety <laughs> and then you'll understand what i'm saying and then last but not least question 29 how much is upkeep of hair makeup etc to look presentable as a dancer so my hair so I recently put y'all on tip in my recent vlog. I put you guys on tip that I recently bought 18, 20, 22 inch raw Indian body weight bundles for $120, right? The closure that I had to buy though, which was 5x5 HD, um, that was $222 because I got it from a whole different company. The vendor didn't have the closure, so I had to order from somebody else. Um, so that's how much the bundles were. The installs are around like 125, 100 something. Um, maintenance installs on the um, hair are like 90 to 100, depending on who does it. My nails, nails, manicure, pedicure, eyebrow wax, lip wax, 155 plus the tip that I give, so 200. Um, makeup, I get my stuff from the beauty supply store as far as my lip liner and lip gloss, hair supply store, so that's like a couple dollars. The blush that I have, I did buy at Nordstrom, so that was just extra, but you don't have to get your stuff from Nordstrom. I got MAC and I got a Chanel highlighter and a Fenty, but you don't have to get that stuff. Um, those were more than $20 I think. You guys can add all of that up. That's just like the basic, that's really just the basic upkeep on top of the outfits, on top of the shoes that freaking cost like damn near 100, depending on the type of shoes that you get and the outfits. Like how much I spend overall for dance outfits cause I buy in bulk like over 300 and with shoes, I bought four pairs recently and they were $322 with a discount. I know you guys enjoyed this video. I really pray that you guys enjoyed this video, this lengthy video, but I pray you guys got something out of it and got to know a bit more about me. And I'm really, really, really appreciative for the people that asked me these questions. Like, you have no idea. If you have any more questions, feel free to comment them below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. And make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And please, please, if you love me, you will watch my other vlogs instead of trying to wait to see how much is in my pockets. <laughs> but um, yeah, until next time, my lovelies, have a great night, evening, rising, afternoon. I love you guys so much. And don't forget 
that you are the creator of your reality. And before I let you guys go, take this with you. Look at life like a package. When you order a package, which can be seen as you setting an intention, you already know that you're gonna receive your order. You're gonna receive your package, right? So start to tell yourself, okay, I set this intention, I placed my order, so I know that I'm gonna get it. You know, it's already mine. I paid for it, it's mine, right? I set the intention. It's either gonna come in one to two days, express shipping, or it's gonna come in a few days or a week or however long. It might take as long as furniture, a few months, maybe a year. Who knows when it's gonna come, but it's still gonna come because I placed the order. It's mine already. So be patient. Look at life like a package. All right, that is it. That is all. Until next time.